Hey guys, I'm James. I'm Anthony. And this is Industry News. Post-Apocalyptia sure is a popular locale in video games lately. What with the commercial success of the revamped Fallout series, as well as the recent release of id Software's Rage, it seems like a war-torn, radiation-filled landscape is a great place to spend exorbitant amounts of hours in. Well, strap on your paint spike armor and reload your sawed-off shotgun, because it looks like we're going to have another excuse to jump back into the end of the world era. According to IGN.com, Bethesda Softworks has announced that Fallout New Vegas will be getting an Ultimate Edition in the not-too-distant future, including every piece of DLC you've received thus far, new places to explore, and an increase to the level cap up to level 50. This announcement is not all that surprising, considering that it is a trend of Bethesda's to release later editions of their open-world games, but it still presents an opportunity to make a trip into post-apocalyptia once more for those who missed out last time. The Ultimate Edition is scheduled for a first quarter released next year. I'm going, going back, back to Sandris. Anyways, on the biggest side, it's been confirmed that Grand Theft Auto V will be making a grand return to San Andreas, pun intended. According to GameSpot, Rockstar just released the first trailer for GTA V, showcasing the lavish, luxurious suburbia and the greedy ghettos of Los Santos. An unknown protagonist narrates the trailer, wanting to move on from his dark past, yet ends up giving in to his criminal temptations. I mean, who wouldn't, especially in a game like that? The sequel has very high expectations to surmount. The franchise has sold at least 100 million copies worldwide since 1998, with the previous GTA title selling around 17 million units, but Rockstar also promises to lead the sequel in, quote, a bold new direction in mission-based gameplay, storytelling, and online multiplayer. The game hasn't been given a release date yet, but players will be expected to go in guns a-blazing on the PS3 and Xbox 360. Next year will be a very good one for those who enjoy being attacked by deranged, deformed monsters in deep. Well, okay, usually that's not something to be excited about, but it will be for the fans of the Silent Hill series. The hellish town will be hitting gamers with a trio of releases set for next year. According to GameSpot.com, a launch title for the PlayStation Vita, an HD re-release of Silent Hill 2 and 3, and the newest installment of the series, Silent Hill Downpour, are all scheduled for a release throughout the course of the next year. Make sure that you keep a spare pair of boxers lying around because this undoubtedly presents the possibility of gamers crapping their pants for the large portion of the next year. Angry Birds lays a golden egg. The success of Angry Birds certainly has been ruff ruffling game developer Roxio's feathers. As of November 2nd, the combined downloads of Angry Birds, Angry Birds Seasons, and Angry Birds Rio have catapulted and smashed through the 500 million mark, according to GameSpot. The developer also re revealed other massive statistics, with players logging in at over 200,000 hours worth of gameplay and 400 billion Game Bird launches. The casual game has also spawned a variety of merchandise, from stuffed animals, books, and even some Halloween costumes you might have seen around your neck of the woods. The company also plans to release a flagship store in Helsinki, Finland. How much do you spend on your games? A recent study shows that nearly half of American gaming population doesn't actually buy their own games at all. The Escapist magazine reports that most gamers simply swap out their disc with friends and family, and more often than not, the gamers don't even stay with the original owner. As for those who decide to pay up, it's been confirmed that a large portion wait until they can get their hands on a pre-owned title rather than buying new versions of their respective titles. This obviously presents a problem for developers as nearly all the profit comes from the sale of new games and downloaded content, and it will be interesting to see how they will deal with the decrease in purchases. While it's clear that DLC is a step in the right direction for developers, the future of game development still appears clouded. Nintendo, why you no make more games? Notice the first party development shriveling up a bit in Nintendo camp. Blame it on the new hardware launches, says President Nintendo, Satoru Iwata. According to IGN.com and Investor Q&A, the house of Mario, Zelda, and Pokemon have been focusing on the transition from the DS and the Wii to the 3DS and Wii U. Iwata has noted this proved to be a challenge and also stated that the company's ability to do everything on its own has, quote, faded. He wishes to promote more third party collaboration, hardware, and software development uh, in, especially in the fields for which Nintendo is not specialized in, quote Iwata. With that mentality, I certainly hope that future Nintendo games will cater more hardcore gamers like myself. Uh, guys, we are so excited for all of those titles coming out, but according to that study, only like one of us is going to have to pay for them. Rock, paper, scissors? Yes. All right. Uh, this has been Industry News. Take care. Damn it. <laughs>